Hey everyone, today I am going to be unboxing and reviewing the new Lego Crocodile locomotive train. This is set number 10277. This one is a 2020 set and it comes under the creator line but not the creator line. So this is a classed as an expert set. It's actually an 18 plus set. This is part of the new branding you can see with the dark box. So I'm going to go into some detail on, on the actual packaging and talk about that. But what I will say is if you've got any questions as I go through or you want me to cover anything in another video or anything like that, please let me know in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer it. And also if you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe. I do talk about Lego trains, Lego CDs, everything Lego. I love Lego. So be sure to hit that magic button. Now let's start by looking at the box. So here we have the front of the box, and as you can see instantly, this doesn't look like a Creator Expert set. That's because technically it's not, it's actually an 18 plus set. So Lego has been working to appeal to an AFOL audience more. And you've seen this branding first appear on the Haunted House and the Star Wars helmets that came out recently. And this is an attempt to appeal to that older audience, the AFOL audience, and their research found that this darker packaging worked better. Now I do really like how they've done this sort of greebling down the bottom here does add a lot to kind of the break the box up and also looks quite advanced and it really makes the product shine now the black is an interesting choice though because there is the risk that something dark like this e.g. dark brown on a black base with dark grey tracks with a black placard is going to look too dark now and they've obviously offset that by having this gold tint behind the box to really kind of try and make it come out but that is the risk of it. And this goes into the instruction manual too. I've seen some photos of the instruction manual. And to be honest, it's a risk because I've seen it in a couple of sets. The Ghostbusters HQ was on black paper and occasionally it was very hard to tell the colors that were involved because you really, when you're printing on black, it really does have to be red hot print quality. And if it's not, it becomes quite hard to work with. So be interesting to see what this is like. I have seen a couple of photos from some of the early reviews saying how that has impacted this. But we digress. We've got this beautiful shot of the train through here. I've seen some people make comments about this wheel here. This is actually a drive wheel. The problem they've got is the way they've done the piston here is actually wrong. But I'll talk about that when I do my review of the actual set. Lego has, as I said in my other video about this set, done this before. They have done a crocodile train, but never to this level, never to this detail. So this is great. And this one runs on the new powered up functionality. And we get a placard there, very much like the Millennium Falcon and those kind of ultimate collector sets. So this really does show how premium Lego is trying to make this build. I personally, having looked at the source material, think this is a great looking train. And having looked at a couple of the sort of preview videos from Lego of this set, I'm dead excited to get into the build on this and see some of the things that they've done. I've also kind of made a couple of changes to my city because these actually sit a lot higher than something like the um, 60197 passenger train uh, power pylons on top of the train there. So we've actually got to make room for this. This is a bigger train. This is a seven wide train. Lego has kept it to a six body with a seven wide once you get the detailing in there. So Lego figured that that was actually still a good size to work with. Moving to the back of the box, we don't get any shots of the actual source material for this, which is quite un unusual and I'd say actually a bit of a shame, but I'm guessing there's something in the instruction manual. I would have liked to have seen a shot of this train in its actual original form, what it looks like on the train tracks to compare this to the real model, so the real train. So that would have been cool. I do like this though, this kind of architectural kind of drawing. That's very me. I love this architectural size. And this is telling you that it's 52 centimeters or 20 and a half inches long and 16 centimeters by six inches tall. So it's a pretty big beast. That's definitely bigger than one of the city trains. You've also got the power functions here, or sorry, powered up. So the linear large motor and the battery box and control unit there. So you can bind those all up and use the powered up app. You can then control this train, which is really neat. I am definitely going to be doing that to this train. You know, I don't like to have things out of display that I can run. So this train is going to be running on the train tracks as soon as I finish reviewing it. Other features a note on the box, there's not a lot else to see. You do get a nice full profile of the train on the side. <clears throat> Other features a note on this, there's not really a lot to see around the box. You do get this beautiful shot of the side view of the train here, which again is the same shot they've got on the website. And you get this picture of the wheel for scale as well. 
something that is missing that you see on the creator sets is a parts list. There's no parts list on the side of this, which, you know, it's not an essential thing, but I kind of always like that because it really gave you a sense of what value you were getting out of the sets. So you do see that on the creator expert sets, the bigger sets, but you haven't seen it on these new ones, which is a surprise and a disappointment to me. I do like them. They don't need to be on the top of the box. They could be under the box, but I do think they actually add a lot to let you understand what you're getting from this set. So now I'm going to open up this box and show you what's inside it. As normal for the expert sets, I'm going to keep calling it an expert set because LEGO hasn't actually renamed it, but as an 18 plus set, you get multiple numbered bags that are the same. So we've got bag one, bag two, so two bag ones, two bag twos, two bag threes, and four bag fours. So bag one is building the base, parts two and three is actually building the main body of the train and then all the four bags are building the two noses. You also get one bag of miscellaneous parts so that's the train wheels and the buffers that go on each end of the train and then the black instruction manual with the sticker sheet in the middle there. And here's the finished train. Isn't that grand? I love this. What a great build from beginning to end. I really enjoyed it. Now bag one is building this. That I will say I didn't enjoy so much. It's very, very repetitive. These are all one tile, one by one tiles along here. It takes a little while. It's fiddly. Had RSI in my hand by the end of it, but got it done. Two and three make this whole center section. And then bags four make both ends here. All in all, it was really, really enjoyable. There's a few techniques I learned in here as well. I like how they've sort of done this shaping up here. Uh, they obviously can't get it quite perfect here because it's a curve and this is flat, but they've done a very, very good job. Now, I will start with the bad news. This isn't a sticker-free set. This is a sticker. <laughs> That's it. Everything else is printed. Yay! But this one piece is a sticker. So... It's actually quite hard to put that in the middle. It took me about five goes to get it right, but it tells you some details of the train um, in terms of the actual way this works. So we've got this wheel here is one of the ones that doesn't have a rim on it. So this is to help it go around corners. It would be nice if it did have a rim on it, but it's just impossible to do it. They'd actually have to make this hinge in here articulated, which would make this gap even bigger. I know a couple of people have complained about this gap here being too large. There's ways to adjust that, but it does make it quite fragile. Um, so that's a minor, minor nitpick in my opinion. I'm, I'm not too fussed about that gap there. Uh, we've got this wheel here, which looks like it's broken. It looks like it should be on there, but actually in the real crocodile train, this piston is actually connected up to here. So this drives this drives these wheels and then these are all connected up so it's like a sort of triangle system so that means that it's all pushing around so that's obviously it's not clear unless you look at the actual model it's it's a shame they couldn't make that nicer but then it's just impossible it would have been so wide to do that so it's a shame all the wheels have these red elastic on them to make them grip the track better which is good to see always nice that uh, we've got that detail in there got these nice printed pieces on here telling you a bit about the train incidentally anyone who's wondering wondering why it's called a crocodile train it's because apparently these ends look like crocodile snouts it's it's not because it can weave through the tracks it's because of that now this train's actually designed as a heavy duty train for pulling cargo through Swiss mountains and uh, there's German version, French version, there's several versions of this train and the way it's designed is, if you want me to get into the technical details, I'll do very quickly, there's a motor in each end, hence this drive wheel, so there's a motor in each end and then this middle bit here with all of this power coupling is a transformer, so they decided this was a great design for it, motor, transformer, drivers are on either side of it, it was very efficient in terms of how it worked. That's what the design of this is. So there you go. That's how this works. I will tell you now, this train is very tall and very long. I will show you some comparisons with the city trains in a second. The pylons up here are very, very fiddly to put together, but I think they look rather fabulous. Good use of these claw slash tooth pieces here. These arms to articulate it up. And then it just, all this sort of electrical buzzing here. These red pieces in here are actually, let's just tip it over so you can see it. These red, actually, what do we do? Take the lid off, it's easier. There we go. These red pieces in here 
are actually uh, whips so they've run these whips around here to actually do the cabling for it so this shows you the sort of transformer approach there so let's just have a look this not a huge amount more to talk about on the outside from this side here we've got another print here we've got the brakes here we've got the a good use I do like the way they've used these Technic pieces by the way these are sort of you see these in Technic doors and steering particularly so these are ball joints here ball joint ball joint and then this arm and they've used that as the piston which works very very neatly to keep it quite tidy got ladders here we've got air vents got windows now one grumble I will say and I, I it's not really that much of a problem the doors don't open this is kind of standard for Lego trains the doors never open <laughs> you do occasionally get them on the sort of carriages but on the actual trains themselves never open going around to the front we can go around to the front or the front it's the same on each end it's just teeter that dangerously off the edge there Good use of these black sausage pieces here to give some detailing, standard magnets, and then we've got the lights here and some handrails. Not a huge amount to write home about in terms of the detail through here. As I said, we've got the plates, but do note, this is five wide and seven wide. Not an easy feat to pull off in Lego, so this whole chassis here is six, and then this is seven. The center body here is six across, and then the track, all, all of the gubbins that hang on the outside is actually eight wide by the time it gets there. So, it's pretty wide. It's, it's a wide train, beware. It's not quite as wide as the Disney train. The Disney train is wider than this, and I know some of the uh, aftermarket stuff that people sell is bigger than this as well, but it's a good profile. Let's just have a look as we go around that one. So. Good use of these rails all around here. Lots of places to, to climb up and hang on to this thing. Now bear in mind that you know these were designed to be workhorses, easy to maintain, things like that. So it had to be easy to clamber on and, and get into. I, I like the way they've done this as well. These are actually sort of tubes all the way through that are attached via Technic to this middle piece. Not an easy feat to pull off looking like that. I think it looks really, really good. I love the detail. All these vents and things through here. It's very nicely done very very nicely done just windows in here and then that's really it we can look on the roof again we'll just show you that one in a bit more detail because I did show that whip slightly so I've got this one pile on down and this pile on up again you can see this profile binocular pieces genius using binocular pieces to hold the teeth in <laughs> that's a good trick so binoculars binoculars and then just lots of arms and bars three bars, four bars, and then these along here just to give a bit of texture and detailing. Not a, nothing to write home about here, but it just sits on the top very, very neatly like that. Now in terms of the internals of this, there is nothing to see bar the inside of this middle section. So let's take this off and then I'll show you the base in a bit more detail. So here we go. You can detach both ends here. They are just literally ball joints there you can see that one's actually come out with it which is always good but that's literally how they attach is these ball joints here just gives it articulation and you can see what I mean about the um, the size and shape of those as well so yeah very simple but very effective I mean if they'd wanted to be accurate you'd put the motor in here and have two motors in here but that's obviously a lot of space I don't think there's room to do that somehow now in terms of internals here oh broken a piece off never good Let's just put some extra light in here. We can see each end is identical. So the, let's just try not to blind the camera. There we go. So we've got the sort of engine transformer unit in, or the transformer unit in the middle there. And then on each end, just some gauges, a lever to pull, a wheel to turn and two seats. Very, very, very simple, but it works. It's is enough in there to do it. And then this whole section piece here comes out, lifts out pretty easily, and you can start to see the Technic mechanism under there. So you take that whole side out, and that's where the um, battery box and motor is going to go into this section. Oh, actually, it's half come out. This should have come out too. So yeah, just caught on the inside there. There we go. Right, so there we are. That's the whole inside of it again. We can see the Technic there driving through the axle. So one thing when you're putting this together, note that the cogs on each end are on opposite sides. If you put them on the same side, 
<laughs> your train's going to kind of try and go in two different directions. So you need to put them on the si on opposite sides when you're putting it together. Okay. Um, one thing I didn't like so much was this wheel here is free, and I did find it catches a little bit on the underside of this. So you can see how that sits in there. They've got this these wheels that go in and that, that sits around the cog so they're not really doing anything other than providing some stability so you can take that cog out if you're not going to motorize it I take that cog out to be perfectly honest I don't think you need it in there it's not making any difference and as I said I just found that it caught just a little bit on the inside here so a little bugbear of mine might not bother many people but I don't know, it just annoyed me a bit when I was pushing it along so what else can we say about the way this is built? We've pretty much covered off everything there. Underneath here you can see the Technic, as I just showed you. Again, it's what I meant with the wheel on each side. So because they're on the same, on opposite sides, it means it all goes in the right direction. This is very, very, very solidly constructed. There's actually an amazing amount goes into making this as strong and solid as it is. It may be a little bit over-engineered, I think, but it's done the job beautifully. It works very, very well. So I couldn't figure out why they put these these in there. I mean, it just. Well, I do know why it's in there. So when you put the this white piece here, it's actually just floating. It's not attached to anything. The reason it's in there is so that you don't put this cog too far in. That's all it's for. So again, just having a look around how that's built. Very simple. There's our there's our ball board joint on the end there that the engine section clips onto. Here's the driver's window. This is quite neatly done. This is all studs on the side through here. So beautifully lined up as well. So this is all sideways built here. This is a um, studs on the side piece here and then two plates and then these uh, um, angled bricks here. So yeah, I think it's nice. I, I do think these stickers just really do add to it. So in the interest of completeness, this is the base. Nope. As I said in my preview before, the classic rails. So these aren't the standard rail pieces. These are individual rails. So this is how Lego trains used to be built with these individual rails and you join them with bogey. So they've, uh, with bogeys in between. So what they've done is they've decided to go with this because what it does, it makes the train sit up higher on the track. So a normal train would be about, um, well, would be one plate less than this, and they wanted it to sit up nicely above the track, as it would on a real train line. So, kudos to the designers for going to that level of detail. There's really nothing else to write home about on this base. It's just big plates, big plates, and lots of tiles, and then these studs on the side uh, or along the outside, one by one tile, um, one by one plates, and then in the middle, one by four tiles and then these two one by four bricks actually hold the train in place we also have the plaque again not a lot to write home about there just very simple tells you a bit about the train Switzerland train ran from 1990 to 1986 that's a good innings for a train like this an electric train that runs like that notice it's not very quick but it didn't need to be it was designed to go up very very steep mountains which is why it's designed the way it is Here's the two minifigures, a male and female figure, one with the hat, one with the hair. They both have exactly the same bodies and just different tools and different faces. But I do like how these are printed with these nice little red scarves on there. Very good detail there. Round the back of them as well. Carries on round, just the usual kind of basic printing there, but it looks really nice. Very, very finished. And you know, it's good to see in a creator set that they have different heads, I know. The tradition on the buildings was to give them all the same face but this one they've given them different faces which is good so I like these minifigures I think they're solid they both get good accessories as well very practical for what they're doing and the interior of the cab is actually designed to accommodate what they've got as tools as well which is rather cool this is the instruction manual carrying on that black theme inside it we go in and we see the usual I love this picture here shows you details about how the wiring works, what the engines did, things like that, and then also how to do the powered up. I apologize, I can't get my camera far enough away from this to show it. But then you're straight into building the set. There's nothing really about the train, which is a real shame. I would love to have seen some information about it. The stuff I just told you about the crocodile train, it's heavy dutiness, 
how it's designed, why it's called that. I would love to have seen something like that in here, just a photo. They usually are so good about it and they haven't done it here. I don't know why. They should have had a photo of the crocodile train with the crocodile train for real and shown you like it. I, I don't know why they haven't done it. I really don't. So that's a real shame. I also am going to have a slight grumble about this black. This black on uh, instruction manuals doesn't work. Like you just can't see certain colors. Let's have a look here. Like when you get to the brown, like just there, you can barely, and, and this, the camera is being pretty good here. That's pretty much how that looks to me. It's very, 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 very dark. It's ridiculous. I don't think this dark instruction manuals work at all, Lego. I'm sorry, I think you need to print them in white. It's just not working. The Ghostbusters had this as well. The Haunted Mansion had it. I don't like it. It doesn't work. It's very hard to get that right, I'm afraid. So, you know, it doesn't look too bad there because the brown is on the light colour. But when it's just the brick, it doesn't work. So I think they need to do something to fix that in this case. And there's a few instances when you get through into the train and you're, you're putting on... Let's see if we can find a spot here. Yeah, see, they've, they've actually gone and lightened it excessively here so you can see it all. But again, it's not the best on the black. It doesn't really work. You can see they've really struggled to make that stand out properly, which is a shame. I think it could have been better. But that's just a minor grumble. You can still see it all. It still works. It's just, I think it, it needs a bit of refinement still. It's not quite there. I know why they've done it. It's part of the branding. Just to give you some idea of the size of this thing, here's two city trains. So we've got the 60197 and the 60052 train here. Two of my favorites and they are absolutely dwarfed by this train. It is a good two thirds bigger than both of them. Which is not surprising, there's a lot to get into this train, there's a lot of detail, and it's not designed to be a city train as I said. To be a city train, go and have a look at the old model that Lego did, that actually used motors in the um, front here to actually pull the train along. That gives you an idea of what it looks like as a city train. It's not a city train, it's a creator train, it's a detailed train, it looks great. I think <laughs> you need to be aware of that. And also, I will just swivel this down here to give you an idea of the height as well. So here is the city train with the power all the way up. And then here is this with the power about where it's meant to be in the instructions. So realistically, even in a city like mine, I need to have them down like this to make them actually work properly at the height I have. <laughs> so just making you aware, that's what needs to be done to use this train in a city setup. This is it with the powered up motor in it. So we've got the motor on this side, lots and lots of cable and the control unit on this side. So. It's pretty shoehorned in there, there's, there's no detail, you, you can't quite see the cable coming out the front there, so that's alright, pretty neat, let's get this on the track. Alright, I'm going to go to shaky cam mode now, using handheld camera to do this. Thought I'd give this one a little bit of a challenge, it's the first time I've used this motor, it should be pretty powerful, this is fresh batteries, powered up, large motor, let's see, I will say, right now, I don't like this light. I'm going to have to swap this around so the light's at the back, but anyway, it's the way this is rolling. Here we go! Choo -choo. Whoa! There's some pretty good torque in that motor, look at that. That's not a short train I just pulled there either. Good, struggles a little bit on the quarter, which is pretty normal, but let's get the speed up. That wasn't going very fast at that point. There we go, just go through the crossover without any issue there around the corner. It's a little snug on this corner, but it doesn't hit it. There we go. Boom. Choo -choo. It's a pretty noisy motor, but it's got some guts to it. I will say that. That's now going at full speed. That's pulling a pretty big load there. Pretty happy with that. That's one motor pulling six carriages. Can't complain about that. <laughs> Doesn't it look fabulous? I love it. Oh, I'm pretty stoked with that. <laughs> choo choo. Choo choo. Choo 
So in conclusion, I think this set's fabulous. I think Lego's done a great job on the design of it. They've really captured all the essential elements of the crocodile train. It would have been nice to see a bit more detail around the inspiration they actually had for this set in the instruction manual, which is a shame. I would also like to have seen that instruction manual not in black, but again, that's a minor thing. Personal thing, perhaps some people will love it, I'm not sure, but for me, I struggle a bit with the black manuals. I don't think they work well with the a lot of the colors, especially in something dark like this. But in terms of the train itself, brilliant. Great fun build, lots and lots and lots of detail, some great techniques, the studs on the side, the way they've made it seven wide. It's good to see Lego adding in a few techniques that's been used in the community a lot as well in terms of, you know, the seven stud wide is a quite a common build in, in the Lego train community because it gives you that extra detail. They've put a lot in, they've made it, the fact you can motorize it and do it so easily they've put so much thought into that it works well and I like seeing the powered up being used in a few more ways I think this is a winner the value is is not bad it's not bad at all you will be able to get this on sale I imagine in several countries uh, I know here it's on sale in one of the department stores so it is a set that will come down in price over time in those sales and things like that but really it's not bad value for what you get there's a lot there and this will look great on your shelf or running around your city be aware though, it is big, it is tall, it is long, it's not gonna match your city trains as I showed you before, but I don't think that matters. It's a great train and I'm good to see Lego in the creator space again making these trains. Hopefully they'll be releasing some additional carriages and things like that to add to it. This is a workhorse train, it's not really designed for passenger carriages, but I don't see why you couldn't add them to it to be perfectly honest. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to know what you think of this train. Are you excited by it? Do you think I covered all the points? Is there anything you'd like to know that I missed out? I'm happy to cover it in additional videos. No problem there. But I think I did get a lot in. I did give you some of the background on this train. So I'm, I'm pretty happy I've covered off most of what you might have interest, interest in. Let me know though. If you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe. I do post regularly. And I'm going to leave you with a couple more videos from my channel. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much for watching.